from the Berlin Standing Goddess to the Peplos Corre. Now this statue is dated 530 to 525 BC and we're looking at a marble original that was found on the Athenian Acropolis. So chances are it's a votive statue, a statue that is given as a gift to a god or goddess, in this case to a goddess, probably Athene or Artemis because both of these goddesses were worshipped on the Athenian Acropolis. This socket shows that I must have had an arm that was originally outstretched and that links to that function as a votive offering because she probably was collecting offerings, had a little dish or a fiali in her hand. However, there are also arguments for her being a goddess herself, uh, Artemis or Athene, due to the fact that she's dressed in rather unusual clothing. Now, originally, we thought she was just wearing a peplos, but it turns out she's wearing a peplos over a chiton. And this idea of having a peplos over a chiton is really unusual. It's usually either or. And that's led scholars to think that she could be, therefore, a goddess. On top of that, there are holes in the head supporting the idea that she might have had a diadem, a sort of crown. And also there's speculation over what might have been in that fist, because we can see that there's just enough space there for, for perhaps something to have slotted inside. And one of the theories is that she could have had an arrowhead in there, linking to her being Artemis, in which case, potentially, she could have had a bow in that other hand. If we look very, very closely at the drapery under certain lighting as well, so we would need UV lighting to be able to do this, there's quite a lot of pattern on there and images of animals, again, linking to Artemis as a goddess of the hunt. Whilst we can't know for certain whether she is a goddess or simply a representation of a, of a maiden or a young girl who is being offered to the goddesses, uh, it certainly is true that with male statues, those choroi could be adapted to represent gods, quite often Apollo, so it's not that unlikely they might do the same with the female statues. The only issue we have is that Peplos Corre is only half life size, which is rather unusual. Quite often, uh, divine beings tend to be larger than life size when it comes to art. Looking at her artistic qualities now, she is very typically archaic. She's got that long braided hair, three tresses over each of her shoulders. She's got the archaic smile, although it now affects the rest of the face. We can see those raised cheekbones like the Anavisos Koros. And she's still in that rather rigid pose, her arm close to her side and the other one requiring a socket. She's therefore showing um, further movement to the Berlin standing goddess with that outstretched arm. But still, overall, I would talk about this as a fairly rigid pose due to the fact that the statue is made of marble and we know the restrictions in that weaker material. And bronze isn't used for the female statues because it's more representative of the male skin tone. Women with their more domestic role in the house were often shown with paler skin when it came to art. Another change between her and the Berlin Standing Goddess is the fact that she reveals more of her fem feminine form than that statue did. So we can see the breasts underneath her clothing. We can also see that she's got a small waist and her facial features are a lot less exaggerated. She's overall more feminine or, according to Susan Woodford, radiant.